I knew exactly what I wanted. I just didn't know how to get there. Mentorship is gaining the confidence of the person whom you're going to mentor. HB has really opened up avenues for me to flourish as a scholar. The HB year was the turning point of my research as a scholar. I seek ways for engagement with other humanists. Break boundaries and forge ahead in humanity scholarship. I remember my dad saying that if you don't take your education serious, if you go back home, that is to his root, and you go and beg people for food, you know cow dung, nobody will give you that, if even that were food for you to eat. But if you go home and they see you have something to offer, everybody will call you my daughter. Since the inception of AHP, there are so many scholars who have really grown in the humanities, and this has given them opportunities, you know, that in the past wouldn't have been easily available to persons in the humanities. I think the experiences I've had from people who have mentored me also puts me in a way to mentor others. <laughs> I even push myself when I think someone needs that help. Yeah, I think I try to do that. She's able to understand issues from my perspective, given the fact that I'm a Muslim. I always feel I'm able to go to her for advice regarding what career path to do, whether to listen to family and settle down and all that. And we've had very beautiful interactions that have one way or the other shaped my thoughts about what I want to do in the future. AHP is the only funding agency I've met which does not simply give you money to do your research. They see you through the doing of the research accomplishment of the research, publication, and distribution. Right here in our university, for instance, there are a lot of people from the humanities who have grown into leadership positions very quickly. They probably would have gotten there, you know, but I'd think of this as an accelerated process because of the opportunities such as the AHP. So I give our vice chancellor, as an example, you know, she grew very quickly into that position with the support of AHP. A new thing started emerging in our horizon at the time um, where a number of departments started slowly encouraging women to, uh, to be leaders. And I wasn't surprised when my former students who had then turned lecturers like Jim Anderson and uh, was so pleased when at the end of the day she became a fellow of the African Humanities Program and ended up being my administrative assistant. One of my students who went on the PhD program here in this university when I was with the support that we are going to be talking about. One of the things that I learned from these mentors was that it was possible, you know, to do anything once I put my mind to it. And I have tried to translate this to my mentees. My AHP experience has been the highest spot so far in my academic career. I got it right after the PhD, you know. When I came back from Vienna, that was 2018, and 2019, I heard there is this call, and I was like, what is this about? When I saw the call, I attended a workshop that was organized by uh, Dr. Anderson, Professor Nana Banfu, Professor Sutherland, they were all there. So they all came and took us through what to do and how the application was like. I thoroughly worked it out. 
And so when I submitted it and it came, it was at dawn, I saw that I had it. I was like, what? On a personal level, I see younger school scholars I have worked with who have progressed quickly within a very short time to the level of um, senior lecturers. And these are young people who have been mentored through the process of the AHP funding process. It shows up as more than a journal, for example, is that the people who have published, once we select your paper... After the AHP, I was then wondering, so you finished, how does it get out? So I contacted Dr. Anderson, and she said, for what you are working on, you have to put in an application to the AHP publication series. I said, oh, wow, if there is something like that, as usual, I would like to take it. <laughs> My PhD was on aspect of the Kusal grammar. And then the AHP award I got, I decided to improve that aspect into a full grammar. One, by correcting the identified comments that I got from the reviewers, and two, to include portions that I didn't talk about in the PhD. So the AHP award, I wanted to add a chapter or two that talks about the morphology of Kusal, of how to use culture to sort of change mindset, how to use oral literature, how to use what we do all the time to, to change the dynamics from which we sort of see the world and practice our culture and do the things that we ordinarily do. Good morning, good morning, and how are you all? What I do for my mentorship goes beyond academia and my community to my immediate environment. I said I'm one of you, so there is nothing like tension, right? And in there, an instance is the member of parliament for the Medina constituency, Anwabu Susu, wants to give award to the best teacher in the community. And I was chosen as a committee member. And for our work, we have to visit the schools to observe how these teachers teach, how they interact with the children, and yeah, sort of grade them generally. We are all girls, we are sus girls, yes. And we were born in the Zungu, where you don't have girls going to school, mostly. So if a man is pushing the girls to go to school, it's like you are just giving or wasting your time because they will end up in the kitchen. school fees, Baba and Bewasa. Wouldn't you have been choosing to Baba and Bewasa? She has a gajia with the Munga Jisau Dayara, Muba Mui school bow, and my yara Nazo school. Baba Yefta, she said, Ah, Yara Mata Kike Gajia de Suakana. Yara Mata de Bad Dubanso. Yara Mata Sunzo Susana, Madafani. She has a Kakaiwahala, Madafaza Susan Susana. She has a Susuke Yara Mata Jin Manya, Mazanshi. She has a she, I am the Zay be a Duba Yara de. Yeah, be a Duba. Azakaya Zay, you do by Ara Tunda de Sonaso, a land that Alay and Dokua. I want you to see that it is very possible for you to get up there. You should have a focus right now. And as soon as you develop that focus, then you start working towards the focus. say that the work I have done mentoring PhD students in the AHP program has really provided me with the kind of skills that I need as a director or as a mentor for the doctoral students at PADA. At PADA I get to meet Dr. Anderson because she also doubles as the director of the Pan-African Doctoral Academy. When I listen to her, I'm motivated, I'm encouraged, I'm pushed, you know, to get the work done and to excel. At UG and at IES, I have the shoulders I have to stand on. It is left for me to explore and get to where I have to be. 
I would say I'm blessed with my parents. Even though they've never schooled, they've been that phenomenal. I remember in Norway, I told myself the very first money I make, I want to take my dad to Hajj because that, that is his biggest thing. In fact, he went around telling all his friends that my daughter is taking me to Hajj. She wants to wear me a suit that nobody can remove. Because for him, the title of going to Hajj is something that nobody can take away from him. So the girls he had, we were able to put him in a situation among his peers where he could feel proud. She baba, be you wasaba. Ni ma ba ye wasaba. Ya ron kuma na do kokere. Da muka duba so suka zo hannun su abiye zo hannun su. Hasiya gaskiya Allah ya kai baba she maka. Da gaba ya zo ya kai na maka. She yasa na duba yaran. Ba yaran wasaba ni. I believe that in the next few years, with the kind of work that we are doing with AHA, the Humanities Academy on the continent is going to be stronger and we're going to have more resources. In five years, if nothing, I should be targeting to be a full professor. If by then, I should have had my appointment as an ASU prof and I should be heading towards a full professor.